I'm Norma Bogan, and I'm going to show you how to knit a sock. It will come out of the box looking like this. You clamp it to a table, the thumb screw, and the crank will be tied up with a little piece of twine. You have to untie that, and it's also tied around the sock. Take the string right off and take your buckle, fold it like this, and we're going to draw the sock through over the buckle part and then pull it down and that locks it in place and hang away from the buckle. Now you have to put in the yarn stand rod long straight piece. Just set it in the hole in the base and tighten that set screw at the bottom of the screwdriver. And then take the yarn stand top, set it right up on the top, and there's a little set screw in the back that you tighten. There. Now this has a little piece of yarn on it. It's just here to show you how the yarn is threaded through the machine. But to start out, you want to put on a little dividing cotton or scrap yarn. So we'll just take this right out, unwind it, and release that spring backwards. Unwind the other end, pull it out. Okay, then take some dividing cotton or some scrap yarn and put it up through this outer loop. You'll want the cone pretty much under it. Bring that up through the loop. Take one of your extra cylinder needles, pull it through the little hole, and down through the front loop, and there will be an end of yarn here coming up from the yarn carrier. Just tie the cotton onto that with a square knot. Now, before you start to knit, you need to hold down with your left hand on the work. There's a sock all knit on the machine when you get it. And there's toe on the sock up in there. So you can't just grab hold of it and pull down straight. You have to reach up in and grasp that toe between your thumb and your index finger. And then hold your other fingers around the sock. And we'll just run it around four times to get some cotton between this sock and the next one. Watch the knot as it comes through. Sometimes the knots bump a little bit. There. Now, we're ready to knit a sock. You cut the cotton back here under the yarn stand top, about four or five inches down. Bring in your cone of yarn and tie it onto the cotton with a square knot. Now, you've got to grab that toe again and hand around the sock. And we're going to knit around until we have yarn on all of the needles. This will take two times around to get the yarn on the wall off. And, and I stop here with the yarn carrier at the front. When I say the front, it means closer to me. That's the front of the machine. Now, to make the salvage for the sock, we're going to switch this switch pin over to where it says out. By doing this, the rib needles aren't going to knit. 
the yarn's just going to pass by the end of them. And that's going to make our salvage. So having put this over to where it says out, we'll go around two times. Now, we'll switch it back to where it says in again, so we can knit the cuff. If it doesn't go right into place, that's because there's a needle in the little track in there. So if it doesn't want to move all the way over, just bump your handle ahead a little bit and try it again. And it should go right in. Okay, salvage is done and now we're going to knit the cuff. We'll knit 25 turns of one one rib for cuff. with the yarn carrier at the front again. Now we're getting down to where you can see that toe on the sock there that we have to hang on to to get our holes. Okay, now to do the leg, we're going to set it up in three in one rib. That means we're going to have to transfer some stitches. And take this work hook with the curved end and slide it up into an empty cylinder slot back here by the clasp spring holder. And pull the spring out and put it over the holder. Now, take a spare cylinder needle and starting with the second rib needle behind the red mark, here's my red half mark, first second needle, starting with the second one, hook the cylinder needle into it and pull it out until the stitch slides behind the latch of the rib needle. And you grab the other end of the rib needle and pull it back and the stitch will slide onto the cylinder needle. And then the cylinder needle goes right down in the slot with its latch open. We're going to transfer every other rib needle onto a cylinder needle. So that will give us three knit and one purl, three knit and one purl, and so on. So you hook the cylinder needle in, pull out the rib needle until the stitch goes back of the latch, then grab the rib needle and pull it back so the stitch slides onto the cylinder needle. And the needle goes down in the slot and its latch has to be open. This is the slowest part, especially when you're learning. You sort of feel like you're all trying to first, but you get faster at it the more that you do it. When you've done a few, you have to knit ahead a little in order to get it the next one. And then you knit ahead again. And every time that you knit, you need to develop the habit of automatically reaching down there with your left hand and holding down on the work. You don't have to pull hard, just steadily. And you'll see as you work with the machine, you need to hold down just enough to keep the stitches down. If they slide up, if you're not holding down and they slide up, it's have to get tangled up. Just a nice steady pull, not so much that you're tearing your wool. <coughs> you're almost around.
you may find when you're learning until you get the hang of it, you might get so that you didn't come out even, but just go around again and straighten them out. There, now we're three and one all the way around. So I'm going to just take this spring with my fingers and put it back in the groove and we'll knit the leg of the sock. I'm going to knit 50 turns, which will make a short sock. That's good for practice, but once you have the hang of it and all your socks are coming out perfect, you might want to make them a little longer than that. Okay, here we go. rows, and take the yarn carrier around to the back and leave it there because we're going to get set up to do the heel and we need to transfer some stitches in the front. Now we're going to pull the spring out the same as we did before, put the curved work hook up into a cylinder slot that's empty and pull the spring out and put it over the clasp spring holder. <coughs> We're going to have ribbing on the top of the foot, but for the bottom of the foot, we'll have stockinette stitch. So we need to transfer some stitches again. We'll start with the first rib needle behind the red mark over on the left side, and transfer the same as we did before. Pull out the rib needle using the cylinder needle, and slide the stitch back of the latch, and then onto the cylinder needle, and put the cylinder needle in the slot. And you continue across the front of the machine, taking out all the rib needles that are there and transferring their stitches to cylinder needles. Another reason for doing this is that you can't back up the river. Can't go back and forth on ribbing. Now, knit ahead to get to this side. And we keep on transferring and taking out the rib needles until we've gone one needle behind the red mark over on the right side. <clears throat> there. Now, put the spring back and bring the yarn carrier to the front and stop it there. Now, there's three things you have to do to get ready to do the heel. First, take the crescent and we're going to raise some of these back cylinder needles so that they'll just hold their stitches, but they won't knit. We leave three needles down behind the red mark and raise the others. <clears throat> now, you'll notice that if you leave three down behind this red mark and three down behind the other one, that on one side of your machine, you'll have one up by itself, and on the other, you'll have two up. That's okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. But all of these adjacent stitches are knit stitches, so it won't be noticeable in your sock. It doesn't look off-centered or anything. Okay, these are all just holding their stitches and not knitting. Now, we pull out the drive pin, This is so that the tappet plate won't move anymore, so that these rib needles that are still in won't knit. 
and you hook up the heel spring. Just bend it forward <coughs> and hook it into the yarn right here between this loop and the little S hook. Just tension the yarn on the heel. Now, hanging on with your left hand, we're ready to do the heel. So holding down with your left hand, we're going to knit around to the back until all of these needles that are still knitting come back up level again. Take the yarn carrier around the back and using the crescent, raise two needles, the last two needles over here. This is to make an interlock. And then knit back across and raise the last two needles that are knitting over on the other side. I hold the crescent in my hand along with the crank handle. That makes it a lot faster than setting it down on the table each time. And knit back across and now we're going to raise just one needle each time. And knit across the one on the other side. As we do this, the work is getting longer in the front of the machine since we're working back and forth on these needles. So, you'll need to get your left hand up inside the cylinder and get your thumb against that heel pocket as it starts to develop. You'll want your thumb to push up and back toward the back of the machine while you're holding on to the rest of the sock with your fingers. And the needles that are going to give you the most trouble as far as the work sliding up are the outer ones that are knitting, the outer edges. So keep an eye on those. If it starts to work up too much, then the yarn can pass by and not knit on the needle. So you'll need to watch those. And if it starts to slide up, renew your grip under there so as to hold it down. Now, another thing that can happen when you're doing heels or toes, if you don't raise the needle all the way up. Then when you come around, if it doesn't come all the way up, when you come around, the cam wing is going to hit it. And it'll either, if it's down too low, it'll pull it down and make it knit. Or if it's up in between, Sometimes the cam wing will just hit it and it won't go. I can't think it stay right there when I want it to. But if you try to come across and it jams and it won't move, check the cam and make sure that the needle butts are all up out of the way so it can go across. You want to raise the needle all the way up so there's room for the cam wing to clear. And as you go across narrowing, you have to renew your grip with your thumb underneath so to get a good hold down on the work. Keep on narrowing until we raise all the needles behind the red quarter mark here in the front. And after we raise this last one over on the left side, we knit across again. Now that's the end of the narrowing phase on the heel. And before we start the increase, we're going to put the heel hook in to help us hold down the work while we increase. This is the heel hook. It's going to go up inside the cylinder, which is all hollow. There aren't moving parts up there that you can get hurt on. 
but this is going to go up inside there with the point about at those red quarter marks. The points will stick into the heel of the sock to help hold down the work. And put it up in until it hits the bottom of the dial. And hook in one side and then the other. When you get it in place, you can see it pulling down on the work. And just check it with your left hand. Make sure that it's through there good and not just hanging on one little loop of yarn. And once you're satisfied you've got it in position, hang a weight from it. Now we're ready to increase. And as we increase, we're just going to hold down lightly on the heel hook. The rest of the sock can just hang free for this part of it. Now to increase, we lower needles. The first time, we're going to lower two to make an interlock. Same as we did when we started to raise. We rose, raise two needles to make an interlock so we don't have a little gap. <coughs> now, take the work hook and put the yarn behind the further needle back and open the latches. Those latches have to be down and open so the yarn can get into them to form the stitch. And you knit back around and lower two needles over on the left side. Put the yarn behind the further one back and open the latches and knit back across. It helps to have a little momentum there as you're going into the needles that are knitting. If you go in too slowly, it might stick a little. Now, having lowered two on each side, we'll now go on by just lowering one at a time. We put the yarn behind it and open the latch and knit across. Now, if you get interrupted when you're doing the heel, you can look at the machine and you can tell which way you should go next. You follow this loop of yarn back around. So if I got interrupted here, I'd know that I needed to go this way around. And the yarn is going to be coming off the last needle that it knit on. This one right here is the, the one that my loop of yarn is coming off from. So I can see that I haven't yet lowered one on this side. So before I knit back across, I need to lower this, wrap the yarn behind it, latch open, and then go on. <laughs> you also want to watch, sometimes when you're learning, might have a little trouble getting the heel hook into position. And if it isn't quite in the right place, or if one side should pop out, then these stitches are going to slide up on the needle and might get you in a jam. So keep an eye on the stitches. They should be riding along about the top of the cylinder. If they start to slide up on the needle, have a look at your heel hook and make sure that it's in place well. You don't want to have to hold down too hard with it because you might rip the wool. It just takes a light, steady hold. If you have to pull down more than that, then it isn't in the right position. We're going to keep on increasing until we put down the first needle out of that interlock loop that we made when we started to raise the needle. So it will be to the point where we're putting down two 
behind the red mark. As you can see right here, there's my interlock loop around those two needles. So this is the last increase over here. This is the first needle out of the interlock. Yarn behind, latch open. That's my last increase over there. And over here, I'm putting down the first one out of the interlock. Yarn behind, latch open. This is the last increase row. So this time, instead of going all the way across, I'm just going to bring the yarn carrier to the front and stop. You have to have it here at the front, ready to head forward, in order to put the back of the machine back in action. If you slip up and go all the way across, then you'll have to come all the way back and bring it to the front in order to have things work out right so that you can put the back into action. Now the heel is done, so we'll get ready to do the foot. We lower the back cylinder needles. Just push them down with your fingers and make sure that all their latches are open and down. Replace the drive pin. If it doesn't line up quite right, you can move the tappet plate a little to get that to go down into the hole. And then release the heel spring, just unhook it, and draw the arm back through. And now we're ready to knit foot. <coughs> to hold the work down while you're knitting the foot, you put your thumb in the heel hook and your hand around the sock and just hold down steadily. Now you'll get about five turns to the inch knitting the foot. So we'll knit uh, 50 turns for this. That makes about a, a 10 inch foot. the arm carrier at the front. Now we're ready to do the toe. Toe is done just about the same as the heel, except that it's a few less stitches. We're going to raise all of the cylinder needles behind the red marks this time. And pull out the drive pin and hook up the heel spring. Now you get your left hand up in there, up in the cylinder, and knit around to the back until all your working needles are up level. Raise two the first time to make an interlock. And knit back across, raise two on this side, and back across, and then raise one each time. Remember, again, to keep an eye on the stitches and make sure that they're not working up on the needle. It'll be the outer edges that you need to watch the most. And keep working back and forth, raising one needle on each side until you get up to the quarter mark. It's the same stalking point as the heel. And then, before we start to increase, the same as with the heel, we're going to put the heel hook on. Hold the work down. Hook in one side, and then the other.
check it, make sure you've got a good hold. And hang weight. And then we'll just hold down lightly on the heel hook, as we did before. And let the rest of the sock hang free. And all my weight down at the bottom here is come to the floor. And just slide this buckle up. Okay, now as we start to increase, we lower two needles the first time, as we did with the heel. Put the yarn behind the further one back. Latch is open. Now we get across. Lower two over here. Put the yarn behind the further one back. And open the latches. And then one down each time. Remember to watch your stitches and make sure that the heel hook is holding them properly. And don't go into it too slowly. Have a little momentum. Keep on increasing until there's just one needle left up in front of the half mark on each side. So the same as with the heel, we go on until we split that into lots. The last one on this side. And again, on the last pass, which is from left to right, don't go all the way across. Just bring the yarn carrier to the front and stop. Now, our first sock is finished. So we're going to lower the needle in the back. Make sure all of their latches are down and open. Place the drive pin, moving the tapest plate if necessary to get it to go down in. And release the heel spring. At this point, you can cut the yarn. You'll have enough yarn left here to close the toe of the sock. So we'll just cut that and tie on the dividing cotton with a square knot. Now before we run in some cotton, we're going to start right away, change it over to one and one rib again. Because we need to have it set up that way in order to do a salvage on the next sock. So I'm going to take this work hook and pull out the spring, put it over the clasp spring holder, <coughs> and we're going to replace all the rib needles in the machine. Now this is just about the same as what we were doing transferring stitches before. You hook into the cylinder needle and pull it up out. Then grasp the butt of the cylinder needle and slide the stitch over the latch and onto the rib needle. There's one big difference though with rib needle. When the stitch goes onto the rib needle, you want the stitch to stay in front of the latch. If it goes behind the latch, then when the yarn carrier comes around, it's going to drop the stitch. So make sure that that stitch stays in front of the latch on the rib needle. With the cylinder needles, it didn't matter as long as the latch was open. But with the rib needles, it makes a difference. If you accidentally slide it past 
and it goes behind the latch. The easiest way to get it back where it belongs is to just slide it onto the cylinder needle again and then back to the rib needle. That's what you've done if you will. Knit ahead so you can get some more. And you'll need to watch your knot as it comes down the needle. <clears throat> Sometimes the knot tends to bump a little bit. It doesn't matter, by the way, if the latches on the rib needles are open or closed. As long as the stitch is in front of the latch, they will knit either way. Just make sure you keep the stitch in the hook of the needle. lowest part of it. You'll, you'll get faster at it with practice. Now we replace the spring and we'll knit four turns of cotton. And then we're ready to do another sock. Now that you've knit a sock, you've got the sample sock that came on the machine knit down far enough that you can separate it and learn how to close the toe. And you can see here's our rows of dividing cotton in between. I'm going to take the scissors and stretch that out a little and snip through a couple of rows of the cotton and pull on the end, up closer to the cuff side. Pull out on that until the two separate. Sometimes it'll break. Just come back and slide it along and loosen that up. Find your end again ragged looking in the broke. Pull on that and it will separate. You should run at least four turns of cotton in between because if your two socks are too close together it's harder to pull them apart. So now this is separated. 
And I have a little darning egg here that I use to close the toes with, to slide it up inside the sock. You can use your hand also. Now, here we have a little cotton left in the top of the sock and in the toe. So we need to ravel the cotton out. You'll come to the end of the cotton over here on the side of the foot. You have to watch the knot there. So it doesn't pull back stitches as it comes out. Yeah, so pull the knot out carefully and then continue to ravel across the top of the foot and across the toe and over here you can see there's two stitches in a loop that's their interlock from doing the toe we want to stop raveling just before that ravel it back slow down when you get almost over there there. Now, we'll cut off this cotton that's left and thread the yarn through a darning needle. And we're ready to close the toe. Now, if you have a yarn that's kind of slippery, you can press your toes, just put a damp cloth over them and press them out first, and that sort of sets the stitches in place so that they aren't as apt to slide back. Now, <clears throat> the first time Take the first two stitches from the toe cap, needle through, and pull it up. Don't pull it up snug, because if you did, you'd ravel back a little more. So just pull that up carefully, and then get your two stitches from the interlock loop. Now that you've caught those, now you can pull it out good on that corner. And now the stitch that we're using here is Kitchener stitch. You go down through the last stitch that you had picked up and up through the next one. And then going back to the foot side, down through your last stitch, and up through the next one. And back over to the toe, down through, and then up. Watch your stitches and be careful not to twist them. If you have trouble seeing how the stitch is formed, try closing the toe with a contrast color yarn. And then that will give you a good chance to see how the stitch is formed. Once you've done that and you can see how it's formed, then you'll be able to do it with your same color yarn much more easily. It is a little easier if they're pressed out, and this one wasn't, because I just took it off the machine. The Kitchener stitch was devised by 
a British military hero back during World War I. And he invented it for ladies to use who were knitting socks for the soldiers. He had to do a lot of marching and they needed comfortable socks that didn't have a seam across the top. So what this does is make it's just sort of like another little row of knit stitches across here. When it's done, you won't see the seam. Now, when you come to the rib stitches here, I'm going to go down through my last one. I'm going to take the rib stitch and the following knit stitch. Do that with the rib stitches so it makes a nicer, flatter finish on the top of the foot. Continue with the others as you did before, but when you come to the rib stitch, you take it and the following knit stitch. And watch your tension on the stitch. Try and make the stitches that you are putting in about the same tension as the stitches the machine made. Then your clothing will blend right in and you won't even be able to find it. There's another rib stitch. I find the darning eggs a big help there. It has helped me to get the tension more even. Stretch and work across it. If you're using a, a two-ply or a three-ply yarn, watch your loops. Make sure you get the whole thing there both of your thighs. Here's another rib stitch. I'm going to take it in the next one. This is the <coughs> easy chair part of the job. After you've knit few pairs of socks, you can sit back in your rocker and close some toes and have some TV or some peace and quiet. So it's fun. It's nice to have a little variety in the work. Another rib stitch. It's a good idea after you've gotten all the way across and, and finished up, turn your sock inside out and make sure that you caught all those rib stitches. Occasionally you might miss one. And you can see there, this isn't the most gorgeous finishing job because I didn't press it out, but it's really pretty flat. And my seaming blends right in. It's 
nice to have socks that don't have ridges across your toes. And you'll come to the, the interlock loop over on the other side here. You'll see that little extra loop at the corner where the toe meets the foot. Now, when you get that last, Stitch. Pull it up snug and then we'll just finish off this end by whipping it down through the knit stitches here on the side. Take it down through three and then <coughs> through three stitches and then back up through the last one and down through three more and that will hold that end in place then you'll be able to wash the sock and it doesn't ravel out and holds it now we cut the yarn and I'll pull out the darning egg. And now for the cuff, we still have some cotton left here. But the machine did a selvage on it, so all we have to do is get the cotton out. Just stretch it out a little bit there and cut through all of your cotton rows. And then you can get hold of the ends and Pull them out. Sometimes they stick a little. Usually when I'm demonstrating. Just get all that cotton pulled out of the cuff. It's okay to snip a little bit at the knot where the cotton was tied to the yarn. And that won't hurt anything. If you cut a little bit of the yarn there. cut down through your row of yarn. There. And now it's done.
something that people usually want to know is how you get started setting up the machine if there's no work on it. This is something you'll run into if your yarn breaks and you drop the work, or if you want to change cylinders, or if you just want to take the machine apart to clean it. Now, I still have some cotton left in here from knitting that last sock, so I'm going to knit it off. This is something, if you want to knit your work off, clean your machine, you can just snip that down by the yarn carrier, but do it carefully, because these latches, without stitches on them, are apt to pop out and bump the yarn carrier. So, assuming you're doing this on purpose and your yarn didn't break by accident in the middle of the sock, you want to just knit it off slowly and carefully. Watch your latches. Real slow. You'll see these over here are sticking out all over the place, the ones that don't have stitches on them. So just knit around far enough to get all the work off. Set my weight down. And to get the river out, with the needle still in it, you can just switch your switch pin over to out, and knit the head just a little until all the needles are pulled in. Then you'll be able to lift the river out. Now, just if you grab it by the river arm, that will lift right up out. It just steps down into the, the cam shell. You lift that right out and we'll just slide all the needles out of it. If you've had it apart to clean it, and you've taken out your needles, then you'd want to check, put your river in, and rotate the dial counterclockwise until that fin on the bottom hits the lever in the cylinder. Then you can see where your rib needles would go and then you'd know that the cylinder needles should go in the open slot between where the rib needles would go. Take this back out. <clears throat> this is a setup basket that we're going to use to set up the work with. First, we'll take a little scrap yarn Thread it in through the yarn stand top. Take the needle and pull it through the little hole. Down through the loop. And then, don't forget, this is the step I used to forget when I was learning. Take the yarn and thread it through the yarn carrier. My needle helps here too thread it through the yarn carrier, and then pull it down, pull you down to the floor, so get three or four feet of yarn down through there, just hanging loose. Now, take the setup basket and put it down into the cylinder, and 
I'm going to grasp this end of yarn where it came out of the yarn carrier, and I'm going to go down around the loop one setup, and back up around the needle, and down around another loop, and back up around the needle. Keep on going around, down around the loop and up around the needle, making sure your needle latches down. Now if you have an 80 needle cylinder, you're going to have to use some of the hooks on the setup more than once. That's okay, it doesn't matter. It helps if you spread them out equally. You can get better pull on it that way. Work this around. Up around the needle and down around the loop. And when you get most of the way around here, you'll find you have to start knitting ahead so as to get at these remaining needles. At that point, you can handle weight in the setup basket. We just have a few more to do here. basket hooks are down below this lever here inside the cylinder because if they are between the lever and the dial fin then that's going to get your river misaligned to start with so knit it down so maybe eight or ten rows so that you've got yarn there next to that lever rather than a hook. And then we're ready to put the river in. Now, you want to watch the fin here on the bottom of the dial. That's going to be important. Have that over toward the left rear and just set the river arm down into the camshell. Slide it down in place. And then rotate that dial again counterclockwise until the fin hits on the lever. Then we're ready to set up the river. Now, you just take the needles and slide them in the slot with the latch open. You don't have to catch a loop of yarn with them. The yarn will be fed into them as the yarn carrier comes around. Slide them in the latch, excuse me, in the slot, and make sure the latch is open. If you've had it apart to clean it, and you've got it all cleaned up there, then you want to put a little oil around the top of your dial as you do this. <coughs> um, medium weight oil is best for this. We use motor oil on them. Now, if you have been knitting a while and you find that the machine's starting to crank a little hard, then you need to put a little oil around the top of the dial and a little oil around the cylinder can. And you can see the difference right away. Now, after you've got some of these needles in, ah, Check your switch pin. I had switched that out to take the needles out before, and I still had it on out. <coughs> but if you 
want it to get those needles knitting, you've got to have it over on in. Just bring that ahead and continue putting in needles. Their latch is open. How often you have to oil the machine depends on what you're using for yarn. You'll find that different ones seem to take it up quicker than others. <clears throat> but you can tell if it starts to crank a little hard. Also, sometimes with a new machine, if it's been in the box for a while before it's shipped out, you might want to put a little oil around the top of the dial and here at the cylinder cams before you start out with it. The machines tend to work more freely the more that you use them. But it's a good idea to put a little bit of oil to start with. <clears throat> and get the rib needles in all the way around and then just knit a few rows and make sure they're all knitting properly and then you're ready to tie on some cotton and run a few rows of it and then you be ready for another sock When you're doing the setup, you have your scrap yarn in. This is a good time to check a few of the things on your machine and make sure that everything's all right and ready to go again. First off, check your yarn carrier position. Now you want to have it so that it's running close to both sets of needles, but not so it's hitting them. You'll have to get right down and look under the yarn carrier to see that it's running closely to the rib needles. And as far as the cylinder needles, the yarn carrier should be set so that the latches of the needles can't come up and open. So there's, it needs to be close enough to them so that the latch can't come up and close up in front of the yarn carrier. So run the yarn carrier close to both sets of needles, but not so close that it's hitting. Once you have that in position, you can check your timing and your tension. Now the tension adjustment on the river is this knob right here. The little pointer on the 60 needle cylinder, which is the standard machine, the little pointer should be probably right around that first long mark toward the middle, the closest long mark toward the middle, either there or halfway between that one and the next one. With the 60, that's, this is pulling the needle over, and the further it pulls it over toward the middle, the looser a stitch it makes. With the 80, where the needles are closer together, you'd want the pointer out further toward the outside of the tappet place, because with the needles closer together, it takes a tighter tension. <coughs> but you can just loosen this little knob and slide this over. Once in a while, they'll loosen up by accident and the pointer will get way out to the far outer edge. Now, if it does that on you, it's going to jam up because the stitches are just way too tight. 
So if you all of a sudden get really tight rib stitches, check that. You get it slid over to where you want it and then tighten it down good and snug so it won't be able to slide. Now the timing. I usually time the machine looking at the right side of the cylinder. That seems to be the easiest place for me to see how it's working. But I'm going to knit it around to the back so the camera can pick it up better and you can get a better idea of what I'm doing here. <clears throat> okay. The timing screw is on the tappet plate. Back here, there's, this is the timing segment that the drive pin goes down into. And at the other end of that is the timing screw. Now to adjust the timing, you're going to loosen that screw. Turn it counterclockwise, a half turn or so, so that it's loose. And then, we're going to come back around here and look by the yarn carrier. Now, you want to have the cylinder needle preceding the rib needle you're going to time on down level with the top of the cylinder. Just kind of bump the crank gently to get it so the top of that cylinder needle is down level with the top of the cylinder. And then we'll time on the following rib needle. I'm going to slide it ahead so you can see that again. And you'll see my tappet plate isn't moving because I loosened the timing screw. But just take this ahead until I have that cylinder needle level. Now I'm going to time on this following rib needle here. So what I do is I just hold on to the tappet plate and I push on the high spot so you can get hold of it by the, the edge and the tension knob and over by the switch pin and just turn it slowly until the yarn is coming onto that needle that you're timing about halfway between the latch hinge and the point of the needle. If anything, you want it closer to the point than the hinge. But if you have it about at the end of that groove where the hinge is, That's where you want your yarn to contact the rib needle. <clears throat> now, when you have it in place the way you want it, take your screwdriver and tighten the timing screw down. Turn it clockwise and tighten it right down snug so it can't move on you. Then knit around a couple of turns and recheck. <coughs> Make sure that you have it how you want it. See if I can get it just so you can see real well. There. I'm gonna bump that head until that cylinder needle right here is just down level and my yarn is hitting this rib needle here's the latch of it back here And the yarn is about halfway between the hinge of the latch and the point of the needle. And I'm 
that should be good for your timing. Now, if you have your, your yarn carrier in position, close to both sets of needles, and your tension so that you're getting a good loose loop there on the, about by that first long mark, and your timing all set, then you should be all set to do another sock. 